I want to first thank you for sitting down and being willing to engage in this conversation today. Well, thank you, Dean. Thank you. And so I'm looking forward to it. So I'm going to jump right in. Okay. I'm the child of a grandmother who had little more than a sixth grade education, came up from the South during the time of the Great Migrations. And my grandmother simply had a dream that one day her four grandchildren, mm. which were myself and my three siblings, would one day graduate high school. She couldn't dream a dream bigger than that right. for her colored children, as she would call us. Yep. I am also the great granddaughter of a woman who was born into slavery. Hmm. And I knew her. We called her. You, you did know her? Yeah. She, oh. she died uh, when I was about seven uh, years old or so. And so she lived a little like about 101 or so. So I am accountable to them. I hold myself accountable to them and the dreams they had and the dreams they couldn't dream, mm -hmm. right? What does it mean for you to come from a people who were enslaved and didn't have the opportunities we have? What does it mean for you as you sit here as the black presiding bishop of this church? Mm. Well, we, we share similar <laughs> trajectories and similar history and, you know, and, and, and the truth is uh, my, my grandmother, I think, had, I don't know if she had a high school degree, I'm not sure about that, but I know she'd gone to high school. She, my maternal grandmother had gone to high school, uh, but she was a sharecropper's daughter and, and the granddaughter of slaves um, and similar on my father's, father's side of the family. Um, you know, I, I remember there was one time uh, when our youngest daughter, um, Elizabeth, was playing, and somehow she got her finger caught in the door. And, and literally, the, the door closed on it and chopped half the finger off. Mm. And, and it was dangling there. And we heard, I heard the scream and, and ran, her older sister and I, we all ran in. And I real, it took a second to realize what happened. And her finger was actually dangling. Hmm. And so I got her older, got the finger up and wrapped it up and um, put ice on it. And then got her older sister to just, I said, you just got to hold your sister in the car. And we got in the car and drove to the hospital. We were living in Baltimore at the time. And we drove to Sinai Hospital mm -hmm. and um, went to the emergency room. And they took her first in line because they wanted to save the finger and mm -hmm. she was a young child. And so they took her and they um, did whatever it was they were doing. And then they put the finger, they said, you've just got to hold her here and hold the finger in this solution because we're trying to save the finger. Hmm. And so I guess they were trying to kill germs. Right. Um, so it's holding in the solution. So I've got this crying child mm -hmm. and literally in my arms, mm -hmm. I mean, literally crying. And then part of me think, boy, her mother's going to kill me when she gets <laughs> home. <And, laughs> so I got this child and I will never forget, I don't even know if she, I've ever told her this story, but I was literally sitting there rocking her. And just trying to rock her until the the pain would subside and mm -hmm. the tears, whatever, whatever. Just doing what you do. Mm -hmm. And I remember just telling her, you are the descendants hmm. of old slaves mm -hmm. who lost everything they had and they made it. Hmm. You are made of tough stuff and this hurts. Mm -hmm a lot of life's going to hurt. Hmm. And you got to fall and get yourself back up. Hmm. And when I was saying that, I realized I was saying what my grandmother had said when we were little children yeah. fell and scraped our knee or something like that. I, mean, I, was, I was actually, it wasn't a conscious thing. It was, it was the same language. And I wonder who she heard that from. Mm -hmm. And I wonder who they heard that from. And it was that deep, and I sang to her, go down Moses, hmm. way down in Egypt land, and you just tell old Pharaoh. I just, I just kept singing to her. I didn't know what else to do with the child. I just yeah. kept singing until her mother came, and I knew her mother was going to kill me. But anyway, it was, that's how deep that yeah. is. And the truth is, everything that I hope I do that accomplishes anything for the good 
of humanity and God's dream in this world. There's a part of me that does it because I owe them. And it's the next leg of the journey that I've got to go. Right. Um, and I don't know, I do know why. I was um, um, just coming here from, um, I was in Charlotte preaching at Friendship Missionary Baptist mm -hmm. Church there. Um, um, a great church, Dr. Dr. Jones is the pastor there and really a fine, um, uh, just a fine, extraordinary pastor and community leader. And I was there with, with a group of friends, we had all grown up together, and we were sitting around talking about, you know, why is it that this little community um, in Buffalo, New York, of, of folk who had moved from the Carolinas and Virginia, mm -hmm. and, and some from Georgia and Alabama, but mostly the Carolinas mm -hmm. and Virginia and, and, and Buffalo, um, what was it that it produced folk, uh, several MDs, um, several attorneys, teachers, and lawyers? What was it? This little black community. Mm -hmm. Why did it produce this, this incredible renaissance of people? We were trying to figure out, well, we were there. What happened? <laughs> Part of it was that that community, at least at that time, knew that the legacy of those ancestors who had suffered so horrendously and worked so tirelessly so that not they, but those who followed them might live the dream. That that was bequeathed to their children and that we imbibed that and it became a part of who we were. And I grew up knowing that I had to make a contribution to humanity that made a difference. I remember one time I got, got I, I, I do know what, what happened. I mean, my father wanted me to go pick up my grandmother for something. And, and um, I said, do I have to go pick I was like 16. He just mm -hmm. learned how to drive. I said, do I have to go get her? And he blurted out. He said, you know, the Lord didn't put you here just to consume the oxygen. <laughs> right, exactly. I, <laughs> right. I remember yeah. right. that was the Yeah. That was the self-understanding mm -hmm. that you're not here just to consume. Right. You are here to give. You are here to make a difference. Um, the Lord has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. They never said it that way, but that's what they were saying. That's right. Um, and that, and that, none of us are here. No man is an island entire unto himself. None of us are here just for ourselves. Yeah. Um, and so, and so that was built into the fabric. We are here for the social good. We are here for the personal good. We are here to actually make a difference in this world. And if you don't make the, a difference, then you are squandering the heritage yeah. that has bequeathed beque beque to you. No, I, yeah, hearing you, uh, well, literally brought tears into my heart too, because I remember hearing those stories and knowing who mm -hmm. our grandparents were and great grandparents were and the opportunities they didn't have. And yet they survived anyhow and they fought for our mm -hmm. freedom anyhow. Mm -hmm. And so for us to one, give up in the face of the kind of struggles that we find today are nothing compared mm -hmm. to, to those. To give up is blasphemy. That's right. It's, it's exactly right. It it's, blasphemy. it's blasphemy. So right. their strength runs through us. and. We are accountable to those folks who really lost their lives. I mm -hmm. always tell students, look, particularly black students, no, no, you can't come here and not turn in your work because someone mm -hmm. died so that you could be sitting here uh, or to not vote, et cetera, et cetera. Which leads me then really to our church, <laughs> the Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, this may not be news to you. It's a white denomination. Uh, the Episcopal Church? Is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. See, right. uh, here we are in a white church. A church that is not simply the church of colonizers, a colonizing church. A church that likes to boast of being the church of 11 presidents, right? Uh, and this is a church with a, at best, checkered history in relationship to issues of racial justice. You know, during the period of uh, slavery, the antebellum period, our church didn't really split uh, and over the issue. Uh, and the reason that they held two separate sort of conventions wasn't because they were split. It was a matter of practical necessity. Right. Uh, to, and so that it never really mm -hmm. came to the forefront of our church as a moral issue in terms of, of slavery. And so given the reality of this church, 
the history of this church, even the reality of how long it took just to get a black bishop, let alone a diocesan, right? Mm -hmm. And here you sit mm -hmm. <laughs> as a black man, PB, in this church, which has not always been so welcoming to us as people of color. And some would say continues not to be so welcoming. Mm -hmm. What does it mean that you are a black man with the history we just talked about in, the, in, in our last conference question as the presiding bishop of this white Episcopal church? I, re I remember um, um, John Melville Burgess, hmm. yeah. um, Bishop of Massachusetts. That's right. Um, he had retired and, and first and black became, diocesan. He first black diocesan, but but you do know that he became diocesan after having been suffragan. After having been suffragan, that's right. It, it wasn't until Bishop Walker, I believe, in Long Island, or Bishop Thompson in Southern Ohio, that a black was elected directly um, as diocesan mm -hmm. without having to go through as suffragan. Right. Bishop Bishop Walker of of D.C. The suffragan bishop, the yeah. bishop suffragan, and then he was elected diocesan. That, oh, that's that, right, he yeah, was. Yeah, they all, oh, yeah, they all had to be tried and that's tested. Right. The system would not elect them directly. It was Bishop Jay Walker in Long Island or Herb Thompson. I can't remember which one was first, right. but but they were eventually elected directly, and, and then hmm. it's happened over time since then. Um, and that's been sort of the trajectory of women bishops, actually, in the that's church, right. too. It was like the church kind of had to get comfortable Okay, we've got a woman bishop, or we've got a black bishop, or we've got an indigenous bishop, or whatever. We got to get comfortable. Do they actually know what they're doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and and that that's just how systems have, and right. people how we all have to kind of wrap our heads around it. And then once we've done that, then we can go to the next step. That's how progress happens. Right. It, but it, 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 not discounting the history that a part of the suffragan bishop history was so that they could could in fact have black bishops, right? right that would have to could right. deal with their black congregants and white bishops didn't have to do that. Right, the suffragan yeah, bishop, I was bishop of North Carolina and right. and the first black bishop to serve right. in North Carolina um, was Bishop Delaney, Delaney. Henry Beard Delaney. And then Denby. Who was his title, his title and Bishop Denby in Arkansas and Delaney's title and I think Bishop Denby had the same one. Bishop Delaney was the bishop, the suffragan bishop for colored work That's right. in the diocese of North Carolina. He's, he did serve several of the other southern dioceses as well. Um, and, and so, you know, on some level, um, part of our calling is the, the hard and difficult calling of helping this community, this is my faith community, mm -hmm. um, to become what God dreams and intends for it to be, what Jesus was talking about mm -hmm. when he walked the shores mm -hmm. of Palestine, um, what he was talking about when he talked about the reign and the kingdom of God. What he was talking about when he said, make disciples of all nations, and he didn't discriminate. Mm -hmm. What he was talking about when he said, uh, come unto me, all ye who are weary. Mm -hmm. um, all ye is actually mm -hmm. biblical for all y'all. Uh, <laughs> for all yeah. ye. And, and that that's really what he was talking about. That mm -hmm. this was a profoundly, um, not just simply welcoming, this was a profoundly embracing mm -hmm. vision of God's created humanity that is no respecter of persons, as mm -hmm. the old King James used to say. Mm -hmm. that that's, that's the gospel vision. That's mm -hmm. what Jesus is about. Mm -hmm. and, and in the church and in the world, mm -hmm. the church is to be a witness to what the world's supposed to be, that, that it may be incumbent upon all of us mm -hmm. um, who claim to be baptized disciples of Jesus of Nazareth, mm -hmm. um, it's incumbent on all of us, but those of us who have positions of leadership and maybe those of us who have positions of leadership who come from communities who know what it is to have been excluded, who, who know what it is, as the old spiritual says, uh, I've been buked and I've been scorned, <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been talked about, show as you want, who know what that experience is mm -hmm. like, who know what, I was thinking about when you were talking before, Langston Hughes' poem, From Mother to Son, yeah. Life for Me Ain't Been No, been no Crystal, crystal Stare. Yeah, yeah that, that those of us who know something about that, mm -hmm. it is incumbent upon us to help the church to be a witness and a community where mm -hmm. nobody else has to suffer like that. Mm -hmm. where nobody else gets put down like that. We who have been put down must not put down anybody else, mm -hmm. and we must not stand by idly mm -hmm. when somebody else is put down. 
And, and so part of maybe one of the callings of somebody like a Michael Curry, who is a descendant of African slaves, um, it may well be to help the church. And this is where John Burgess came to mind. Help the church to truly be Catholic. Hmm. We're comfortable with being Catholic as being doctrinally faithful right. to the faith once delivered unto the saint. And I believe that. I, I got a problem with that. I believe that. Um, and we're comfortable with that. Well, sometimes. <laughs> I think most of the time. But, but, but that word Catholic means something else. Mm -hmm. That word Catholic um, um, is, is Acts 10, where Cornelius, where Peter realizes that, that the spirit of God has gone fallen upon the Gentiles, too, mm -hmm. just like it did upon the, the Jewish, Jewish Christians. It has now fallen upon Gentiles, mm -hmm. and that the spirit of God is no respecter of persons, mm -hmm. um, and that God calls who God wills and who God wants, mm -hmm. um, and that God's going to create a beloved community. In Christ there is no east, no west, in him no south, no north. And that that's our calling. Well, maybe it takes a descendant of chattel slaves <laughs> to come and just say what is already the case. Right, right. And to, and to invite and call and plead and cajole and do whatever you have to do to say, come on, let's follow Jesus for real. Well, let's, let's really follow Jesus. And that leads me to the, your initial oh. call. Uh -huh. To call Episcopalians into the Jesus movement. Oh, oh yeah. Now I'm glad you said that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you were trying to lead. No, no, to, I really wasn't. Lead, anyway. lead to the Jesus movement. Because what's interesting to me, first of all, you know, some of my non-Episcopalian friends have said, so what have y'all been doing all along? All right, that suddenly the presiding yes. bishop's got to call you into the Jesus movement. <laughs> but that's a real question, yeah. right? What have we been doing all along? And to hear as you talk about this and talk about what it means to be truly Catholic, and when we think mm -hmm. about our history as the Episcopal Church, and when we think about it, I mean, we're both descendants of enslaved persons. So we're descendants of persons where the Bishop of London said, when you get baptized, don't be thinking that has something to do yeah, with your civil estate. <laughs> what's going to happen on earth right, to you. You're right. going to still be a slave. Now, yeah. when you get to heaven, God can work that out, your salvation. Uh, to, but down here, yeah. you're going to be a slave. And we also know that they said, when you get to heaven, the salvation that you're going to receive is to be able to look through a little hole uh -huh. in the fence on the other side. And if you could, you will be able to look through and see the white people being happy. Uh, to, and you're going to be saved because you get to look through the hole of the fence. So this is our church. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound a whole lot like Jesus no. to me, right? And so I thought when you called, I know there are people who were fearful, oh, Lord, he's called us he's, into the oh, Jesus oh, movement. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to have to be we, evangelical we, and right. knock on doors and tell people yeah. to come, but you know, we, that doesn't work. Fundamentalist. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I heard it as my black presiding bishop signifying. I heard it as my black presiding bishop saying, y'all, yeah. you have not been following Jesus. As long as this church isn't speaking out on social, and you called him to the Jesus movement in a moment of, well, the moment we're in, in this, this racial unrest right. and injustice. And so I heard you signifying. That, you know, in black tradition, we signify, and signify. those who have ears to hear will hear. And that's what I heard you doing when you called the Episcopal Church into the Jesus movement. I said, watch out now. So, yeah. tell me what prompted you <laughs> to call the Episcopal Church, who there's no other denomination hmm. that has, that takes more seriously, it claims the incarnation, yet you said, no, you don't. We need to all become a part of the Jesus movement. Now, what prompted that, Brother Curry? Uh, well, Sister Dean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's because I genuinely do believe that this church has the capacity, as that old hymn says, rise up and claim the high call. Hmm. I, I, I genuinely believe that. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I really do. And, and, and I believe deeply that Jesus is the key <laughs> to our salvation, our emancipation, our liberation. And he's the key. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's true for the Episcopal Church, but it's true for any of the churches. I mean, you look at any of the mainline churches, um, uh, Protestant, 
of Roman Catholic um, in America, I'm talking about now. I can't talk about the rest of the world, but in America. Um, there is a pattern of accommodating and becoming comfortable with the culture and the way things are. Right. And, 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 and that just happens. It, it, it happens. And um, when the church gets too cozy with the culture and the way things are, you have to ask yourself the question, so who is your Lord? <laughs> Who's really God? Mm -hmm. Who's really in charge? Um, and I know we got to find new words for Lord. I, I get all that. I know that. But the point is, what it's getting so at okay is that. who yeah. is in charge of your life and the life of the church? Mm -hmm. Is it Jesus of Nazareth? Or is it the culture in which you are embedded? And, and if it is the culture, then you're not following Jesus or not following Jesus as, as he and he said, when Jesus, him says, Jesus calls us or the tomb yeah. he, not following him. Because if, if, if the, the Jesus of Nazareth, the, the, the teaching Jesus, the, who they later discovered to be the Christ, but they heard his teachings mm -hmm. and saw the way he lived his life mm -hmm. and how he interacted with folk, mm -hmm. and they eventually, I like, I'm going to be careful because I know I'm talking to a theologian, <laughs> but I remember, the one thing I remember from Paul Tillich was he said that some about Jesus was he was transparent. <laughs> and folk could see God through him. Yeah, that's right. That, and, and so they came to know him as Christ, the Messiah, and all of that through seeing through mm -hmm. him. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, they said, this, this brother is like showing us God, like we have seen this before. And, and that Jesus of Nazareth is a game changer. Um, that Jesus of Nazareth is the one who defines his ministry in Luke 4. I mean, mm -hmm. quoting from Isaiah, uh, right. the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, what? To preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty all those who are oppressed, yep. and to proclaim the jubilee, the great getting up morning, the, the acceptable <laughs> year of the right. Lord. That's Jesus. Right. Now, I'm here to tell you that that Jesus <laughs> can take the Episcopal Church, can take the Presbyterian Church, can take the Methodist Church, the UCC, the Roman Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church. That Jesus can take Christians and turn us upside down, which is right side up. Because yep. the world defines us upside down, I mean right side up. Jesus turns that upside down, which is actually right side up. And so I really do believe that, that a Jesus movement People whose lives are rooted and grounded in this Jesus of Nazareth and his example, his teachings, and his loving, liberating, and life-giving spirit. That, that, that's, it's going to be different. We're not going to be perfect, but it's going to be different. And, you know, I mean, I, I know and believe, and I, and I know I'm, no, I think I'm on solid ground. That where I have gone off in my life, and where the church in its history has gone off in its life, where it's been silent mm -hmm. during slavery mm -hmm. or complicit or explicitly complicit, mm -hmm. where it has been silent at any folk being put down, whether it's women or LGBTQ mm -hmm. folk or whoever, anybody, mm -hmm. whether it's poor folk, whoever it is, mm -hmm. putting down anybody, where it's been silent or vocally complicit, mm -hmm. it has been, it's been when it has strayed away from daring to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. See, see I, I, I did a study when I went on sabbatical. Did I tell you about this? No, no. When I went on sabbatical, the Diocese of North Carolina was kind enough to give me a sabbatical a couple years ago, and I went off and decided I wanted to study the Sermon on the Mount, Mm -hmm. And I wanted to look at abolitionist writings mm -hmm. um, theologically to see kind of how I wasn't as as con interested in studying how the abolitionists construct. I wanted to know how the folk who justified slavery yes. constructed their arguments. Yes. I kind of knew how the yes. abolitionists, you know, I sort of I discovered something. You find very few direct references to the actual teachings of Jesus That's of right. Nazareth That's in right. pro-slavery writings. That's right. Now there's a reason for that. Yeah. Jesus is not helpful if you want to be a bigot. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He's not helpful. Well, but and the church has gone wrong when it goes away from that Jesus and fixates on being part of the way things are yes. rather than the way things so God wants them to be. So let me push that. I think you're right. And okay. uh, you very much on that. And let, let, me, let me push okay. that just even a little further. Because we have at the center of our faith, we, we recite it every Sunday for those who go to church, a creed. 
Oh, yes. That completely, absolutely ignores Jesus' ministry and teachings. One would think that he came into the world to die. And so we don't, you know, the Nicene Creed, that little thing, as well as the uh, Apostles' Creed, when we say it, as well as the Athanasius' right. Creed, you know, the, 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 and this is the center of, of our faith that we recite mm -hmm. every week, and that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. Right, right, right. You know, homos Lucy and all that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. How, 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 however, the Gospels focus on this man. Jesus, ministry and teaching, and that's how we know his And mm -hmm. Bishop Curry, when we talk about the Jesus movement, I'm with you on the Jesus movement. Mm -hmm. It's a movement toward the kingdom that is God's or the future that is God's, mm -hmm. but it goes through the cross. Right, that's right. So, what does it mean? <laughs> what difference does it make to be a part of a faith tradition with a crucified savior at the center. Oh. And he didn't get there because he prayed too much. He could get on the cross because he prayed, but it wasn't because <laughs> he prayed too much that he got there. And so what does that mean? And what does it mean to be a part of a faith tradition with a central creed that doesn't even talk about that? I'll, I'll leave that the creedal piece to the scholars and theologians. I'm just a country preacher. No. But, <laughs> but, you know, I, actually, I, th there probably is a holistic way to look at it in terms of liturgy. Because you have the gospel. It's not an accident that preaching follows the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes think the creed is probably meant more to be sung than simply said. It's, it's almost an act of doxology of praise, <laughs> you know what I mean? After you've heard Jesus in the gospels, heard his teaching, seen his miracles, heard about his grace, heard the manner of his life, all the stuff about Jesus, then theoretically at least, a preacher's supposed to get up and say, oh, Jesus is so good. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you how it applies to us now. And then the church is just supposed to rise up. We believe in one God, the Father, Almighty Creator. It's, it, it's doxology. Mm -hmm. But when it just becomes red, I, I think exactly what you're describing happens. I suspect that at the core, this is interesting, at the core, is the Jesus of Nazareth who said, whoever would save his life must lose it, and whoever would lose his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit somebody to gain the whole world and lose your soul? that the way of the cross is not just a mystical and metaphorical way of life. It is the way of life. And that those who want to live for themselves won't find life. And a church that lives for itself isn't, church. isn't gonna find life either. The way of the cross. Which, I mean, I remember, um, I mean, Bonhoeffer is hard to understand. I mean, I, I've, but, but the parts that I can get, wrap my head around, was in his book, In Ethics, where he has a chapter on love, and he says love, bi biblical love, is cruciform. Right. Um, and, and it means, and it does involve, it mean, means sacrifice. And it, it sometimes means giving up self in order to make a difference in the life of the world. But that's what, that's what Jesus was doing on the cross. He didn't die for himself. Mm -hmm. He died for others. I mean, when Bonhoeffer said he's the one for others, the man for others. I mean, that's so that a church that follows Jesus must be willing to die in order to save life, in order to be instruments of salvation. And that scares me. And it scares us, but it's the way of the cross. It's the way of love. And it's the only way to true life. So you're right. <laughs> you, you're right. I get it. You're, you're right. No, you, you know, and yes, and you talk a lot about the way of love. And one of the things for Bonhoeffer, for Gutierrez, for Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, the way of love that is God's, as, as Gutierrez would say, 
God's love always manifests itself as justice, yeah. uh, as shalom, yeah. you know, which is not right. simply a peace without discord, right. but uh, shalom is a peace on the way that reflects justice, which means there could be a lot of discord. Mm -hmm. And that's the cross. And so I just want to take me to today what it means mm -hmm. to uh, be a part of a movement of one who went through the cross, whose way of love was defined on the cross. And yes, uh, he was there and sacrificed so that we might have life. And he gave up his life so that we might have life. But we also know, or and, mm. we also know that his being on the cross, as well, we're quoting theologians, as Karl mm. Barth would say, was the world's no to God's just future. Yes. And oh. that it was political and ecclesiastical powers right. that said no right. to God's just future. Mm -hmm. And they crucified him. Yeah. It was a, a political act of crucifixion. And we also know that he yeah. accepted being on the cross, that he refused, we know, you know, now you know, you you can tell you, you know, from the South, and you, you can quote scripture. I've been born and bred Episcopalian, so I can't quote it all the time. But, but, but I do know <laughs> yes. that, that when, at, I can quote the songs from our people. Yeah. That you they know. whipped him up the hill, up the hill, up the hill, oh, and he didn't yeah. say a mumbling word. word. They nailed him to the cross, to the cross, to the cross, and he didn't say a mumbling word yes. because he refused right. to do anything that would not allow him to be in utter solidarity with the crucified classes of people of his day. That's what it means to follow the Jesus yeah. movement, the one that ended yeah. up the cross. So now, in the day in which yeah. we find ourselves, right? And this day where it's very clear, I mean, come on. We, the, the, this is America needing to decide who it wants to be. It's 2019. Yeah, 20, 100 mm -hmm. years after, by the way, it's no accident that this, that we're seeing this ramp up of, of racism coming out of the White House 100 years after 1919, right? When another equally as racist yeah. president was sitting in the White House yeah. and the sum, red summer, right, of mm -hmm. 1919. That's true. And so here we are a hundred years later, right? Mm. And now I don't, but we're sitting here now mm. mm -hmm. being called into a Jesus movement, mm -hmm. right? Of someone who uh, was nailed to the cross because folk who sat in houses of power said no to God's just future. Mm. Yeah. So now, I ask you, I want to ask you again, <laughs> in the context of 100 years after 1919, looking like 1919 right. and 2019, looking like That's another right. red summer, when we've got someone again sitting in the White House saying no to God's just future, mm -hmm. in houses of power saying no to just God's just future, our silence mm. would be a betrayal right. of the one who went to the cross. Right. So... Bishop Curry, hmm. what are we called to do in the Jesus movement at such a time as this? You know, I have more appreciation in such a time as this for the power of recognizing that our job is to consi consistently witness. Um, you know, you got that passage in Acts 1, you know, Jesus, sort of his last words before the ascension, actually, before he ascends. Um, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And ironically, he says this, they want to know, is this the end of time? Is this when it's all going to, you know, wrap up? I mean, I, you know, if I met the dude risen from the dead, I expect I would have assumed, okay, this must be it. <laughs> um, so that, that's the conclusion they draw. Um, and, and Jesus says, it's not for you to know times or seasons. Don't, don't get fixated on that. God will take care of that. That's God's job. Mm -hmm. Your job here and now mm -hmm. is to witness mm -hmm. and be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Our job is to witness to the love and justice of God that is God's moral arc. Mm -hmm. Our job is to witness both in what we say and in what we do, uh, both in the ministry of actually serving mm -hmm 
and the ministry of prophetic witness yeah. um, and the ministry of trying to change lives and social structures and the world around us so that it is more just and humane and kind and decent and loving that it actually looks like what God had in mind at the beginning. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I love that prayer. I never forget a sermon. I mentioned John Burgess. I never forget a sermon he preached when I was in seminary called, Do You Really Want to Pray This Prayer? And it was on the Lord's Prayer. Do you really want to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? You may want to second think about that prayer again before you pray it next time. But that's what we're talking about. Our job is to witness mm -hmm. to that kingdom, that reign of God in our time and in our world, God's kingdom to come now. Um, and for us to work to help the world look like God's kingdom. Um, and therefore, that does mean entering into not the partisan fray, I, I, I'm, I, I don't like that, but into the political fray from a moral posture, mm -hmm. from, from a position of values, mm -hmm. um, and lifting up the values that we hold um, in the public sphere, That's right. um, not a partisan thing, because that, that doesn't get anywhere. That just gets into the, that just jumps into the mud with everybody else but to uplift up the values and the morals um, that actually bind us together, that are at the core of our faith, and on, in some levels, uh, at the core of the ideals of this nation, even when it hypocritically didn't obey the ideals it said it professed. But our job is to witness, and sometimes that witness takes very practical form, and it means feeding folk. Mm -hmm. um, and it means providing human services mm -hmm. and providing them. Sometimes it takes practical form in terms of public policy, advocating mm -hmm. for public policy mm -hmm. that is humane and just and kind and decent, that mm -hmm. looks mm -hmm. like the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, th that looks like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes it is in more radical protest that knows that it's not going to alter the way things are, but the statement's got to be made anyway. Right. Exactly. I mean, there are, man of, there are many gifts, but the same spirit. Yeah. And so I think we've got to call the community to all of those gifts of witness mm -hmm. um, in our time that do so, and this for me is really critical, that do so out of a loving, a genuinely loving, unselfish, sacrificial heart that actually is laboring for the good of all. Yeah. That, that, that real justice it's justice for all. I mean, you and I grew up, I know you, you're a lot younger than I am. But, oh, but, no. Did that, no, you, did that you, work? Did that, you, I, got, no, that, I got a smile I, out of you. Because I That's know you're good. sitting here not I, telling the I, truth. I know I'm jiving. But so, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> but we grew, up, we grew up on that <laughs> Superman used to come <laughs> home, you yeah. know, from school. And Superman with George Reeves would be on yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. And it, oh, was, you, it was. No, I didn't grow up with that. Oh, then get out of here. Was, <laughs> and you grew up with Captain Kangaroo, too. Right. You know <laughs> but remember, you come home and as hokey and as corny as it was and all that kind of stuff. And, and it was. And yet, Superman stood there and stood for truth, justice, and the American way. Somehow, mm -hmm. truth and justice were linked to the American way. Mm -hmm. I fear that in our time, Truth and justice have become separated from the American way. So that if we want to call America back to its true ideals, then even Superman got it right. Truth, justice are what the American way authentically should look like. Well, see, and I'm going to push back just a little bit I, I because I would, did grow up. Right, yeah, right, I, you know. I knew it was coming. Because <laughs> I did grow up on Superman. <laughs> I know you did. Right, and, and Lassie and Dennis the Menace well, and all those. Right. And, and you and, weren't there, but I know. And, uh, <laughs> I know you're going. Go ahead. And Mayberry Arthur. That's right. Yes, yeah. And the American way, you know, it never dawned on me as I was looking and loving Andy Griffith. Oh, Andy Griffith, yeah. And, yeah. and Mayberry Arthur. That there was nobody looked like us. No. And that was the American way. And then when we oh, turned, yeah. and, and then when we turned up on TV, right? It was remember. I know you grew up on Tarzan and Jane and Tarzan oh, and yeah. the Jump, okay. right? Yeah. Or Amos and Andy, right? That's where. Right. When we, or, Julia came eventually. Remember yeah, Julia? she did come yeah. eventually, right, but there right, was always right. a white savior. There always was. Oh, yeah. uh, then of course, and Julia and, and Corey was without a father. The poor black man, that's you know. Really right. Remember that's, that's right. right. Yeah. You could not have an intact no. black family. Right. Uh, the, and so this was the American way, mm -hmm. and even when people say that what we're seeing today is not the American way, well, uh, right. and, and so what we have to say, it's not about being partisan to me, Bishop Curry. 
It's mm. about the soul of not only this nation, but the soul of who we are as a people is at stake, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And that Jesus was crucified did, meant that he didn't stay out of the political fray. Mm -hmm. And he did, and I agree with you, he put forth out of love of all humanity, mm -hmm. refusing to let even those who would deny the humanity of another, to refusing right. to let them live in a place that denied and betrayed their own humanity. And sometimes that, those were harsh words. Right. Harsh words spoken of love. It's sort of like, you know, your sure. parents would say, you know, I got to whip you because I love you. I love you. Right? And so, yeah. anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. all of that. So what does that yeah. look like? And even acknowledging, you know, the American way doesn't supposed to have us in it. And that's why mm -hmm. we're getting what we're getting right now. Because that which is the uh, uh, to make America great again is to make it look like it did in Andy Griffithville, right. and that right. doesn't that doesn't. Not, so he did mean Superman did mean truth, justice, and well, actually life. embedded in him is the contradiction, yeah. which has been which has been the contradiction. It's been the ambiguity of history of American history. I mean, yeah, to, yeah. to borrow the phrase, I mean. That truth, justice, and the American way are they synonymous? Yeah, that's or I just get that. That's right. Different, right? <laughs> Where right. do you put the commas? It's kind of like that's right. it really is. It's, it's truth, a, justice, and, then, and yeah. it's true. But see, I, I really do I, believe that part of, I mean, part of, um, I think the the importance of, um, what, I'll give you. Let me back up. When we went to, you were there at general convention this. Uh, Pat Dunn, 2018, mm -hmm. uh, when we went to the uh, Women's Detention Center. Yeah. And um, thank you and thank everybody who made that possible because um, we went there. These were mothers who had been separated from their children and um, and it's still going on at the border. And, you know, you've been, I mean, it's, it's still going on in various forms. Um, and... Um, but when we were there, I mean, I, I remember wrestling over what to say when we got there. And part of what I did say was that we must help America claim or reclaim its soul. Mm -hmm. the, the soul, in spite of all of its contradiction and its hypocrisy and duplicity, mm -hmm. the soul that was there in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, that all folk are created equal. Uh, that was there in the Gettysburg Address, four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men, that all folk are created equal. That, that, that th those principles, those ideals, which were hypocritically applied, mm -hmm. I know that, <laughs> but the ideals stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We must call America back to those ideals because that's where its real soul is going to mm -hmm. be found. Mm -hmm. And if America wants to be, I think it was de Tocqueville who said, America, I think he said, America is great because America is good. Mm -hmm. America will be great again when America is good. Right, right. When it's just, when it's kind, when it tells, speaks truth, when there's truth mm -hmm. declared in public squares, when it's honorable, mm -hmm. when, when, when America labors to end poverty, when America labors to make sure every child gets an education, mm -hmm. when America treats people from Honduras and El Salvador and Guatemala like human beings who are children of God just like the rest mm -hmm. of us, when, when America builds its policy like that, then America will be great again. Yeah. Um, and so that's calling America back mm -hmm. to its true ideals, at least what it's all, that's what I was always taught. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's not so, then let's, let's say it. Yeah, then we need to say it. Then we need you know, to say it. Then but say it. I believe that that's the case. Right. I mean, right. I, I, I'm sure it's the case. Um, and I think part of the Jesus movement is calling the church back to its soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to Jesus, back to the core where we'll actually find life. No. So I'm, I'm just going to ask you one more 
one or two more questions. Well, you so, can, this, this, you, <laughs> like when we used to do when we were young, way I, back when, I, when I, we used to sit, sit and talk for hours and, hours and hours. Now, when you were young, I wasn't born. Yes, yeah, so you, 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 you are Superman. Right. And you are Captain Kangaroo. Right. Annie Oakley, Sky King, all, 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 the, all, all the yeah, 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 all and all them people. And again, we and were, none of us were there. And we I weren't know, there. And we didn't. I know the thing is, we didn't even notice. We didn't even notice we, we weren't there. Know. You know, and, and and that's a part of how insidious, yeah. the insidious nature of racism is, right? We took into our consciousness yeah. and our soul an America that did not look like us yeah. and did not want us. Our right? game was about as good as it got. As good as, and then look at who they had in and our game. Buckley. Stymie and Buckley. Stymie and Buckley. Right, yeah. right. And so, I mean, that's the insidious nature. And thank God for voices like James Baldwin, right? And, and Audre Lorde, who remind us not to believe for a moment what America says about us, right? But I'm a, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna push the Jesus movement in, into our church a bit. Into the Episcopal Church? Into the Episcopal Church, right? And into our Anglican communion a bit. So you and I. Oh, you want to get the communion in this, too. Yeah, I want to get the communion in that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be bad. I'm going to be bad. Oh, okay. All right, yes, because yes, you know, I, right? I'm, I'm going, gonna... I'm going to ask about Jesus on that cross in relationship to Lambeth that's coming up, mm-hmm. and the Lamb, the Lambeth conference, mm-hmm. and you know, one of the things, and 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 that, be serious, and I'm serious anyway about this, but in terms of as I think about this as a theologian and in our church in the Anglican Communion. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, this Lambeth Conference, uh, uh, as it comes together and Archbishop Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury made the statement in regard to excluding the spouses of LGBTQ uh, persons and uh, wanting, of course, to make sure that uh, those bishops that disagree and we know what for the most part, what part of the communion uh, they are from that negate really the personhood of LGBTQ persons to make sure that they're able to come to the table and feel comfortable. And as I think about this, Bishop Curry, and you and I have been back and forth on this, uh, then I think about our history and we talk a lot and we're concerned a lot in our church and in our communion about unity and the unity of the communion. And it's a, it's a part, it's, it's a prevailing narrative in our history. All the it way is. back prior to the Reformation, we're always concerned about unity. But it seems to me <laughs> that unity follows justice and is mm. defined by justice and not the other way around. And, you know, and I remember, you know, Jesus said something like, let the dead bury the dead and let's go on with the living. <clears throat> Okay, you. Says something like that. (laughs) And so, I mean, you know, you know scripture better than me, but say something like that. Yeah, it's a good rhetorical setup. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I I think about our presence at a conference where certain people aren't welcome. At a conference where there are people who not only say that they aren't welcome, but won't even affirm them as children of God. I think about a communion coming together with people who have not spoken out in their own cultural, national context against people who are being put to death because they are LGBTQ. What does it mean? I, 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 it's almost unconscionable to me, we've had this conversation, to go. And because we should be the ones that people should say, we don't wanna make you uncomfortable because you're trying, I mean, we aren't perfect. But you're trying to move toward this beloved community. We're trying to be the change we want to see, as Mahatma Gandhi would say. So how do we go protecting a unity that is not just? 
how do we do that? How do we become a part? Is Are we being complicit in the kind of, we know, executions that are going on in some countries because people are LGBTQ and their bishops aren't speaking out against it? What do we, help me understand that. Let me go back to John Burgess again. <laughs> When I first heard him say this, I think it was at a Union of Black Episcopalians caucus meeting of some kind. And it probably was when it was the old UBCL, <laughs> Union of Black Clergy and Lady, I think it was. So this is going back some years. And um, there were folk who were frustrated with the Episcopal Church. And, um, and there was some discussion about, is it time to just leave? And, and I remember Bishop Burgess, who was not who was a who was a conservative? I think by, a person by nature, mm -hmm. but conservative in the best sense of that—that that he was deeply tied to the roots. And root, the word Latin word for root is radical. radical so, so that there was a conservative radical in there. Mm -hmm. And I remember him standing up and saying, "We must not leave this church because if we are not here, it is not truly Catholic. That part of our vocation." is to help to make the church truly Catholic, universal, embracing of all. And, and if we're not here, then we're not part of the solution. We're just more part of the problem. Now, th that's an old argument that can be debated. I mean, W.B. Du Bois and Booker T debated it at the turn of the 19th and 20th. I know that. But that, that's where he was coming. I would argue that we must, in some form, a, 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 clerk, a, a bishop from the Episcopal Church, in some form, be present. Because if we're not present, the discussion and the fullness of discussion is not going to happen. And, and part of um, what we can do is bear witness. Um, bear witness um, to what it has meant in our church to, to, to try to be a church where we take Jesus seriously when he said, quoting the prophet to my house, should be called a house of prayer for all people. And, and that ultimately God is the judge, not us. Um, to try to say, we want to try, we're going to try to love. And if we're wrong, we're going to, I'm, I'm willing to be wrong because I tried to love somebody. I'm, I'm willing to take that hit, you know? Um, and so, and to bear witness in that respect, um, and to bear witness to the fullness and the gifts that our LGBTQ brothers and sisters um, have like men and siblings, what they have meant. To what they mean to us mm -hmm. um, and the church, and and to bear. If we're not there, that well, witness doesn't happen. Now, let me, but let me also say something. Okay. There is no singular way to witness to mm -hmm. this, and that that's where you and I actually do have agreement. And yeah. I've I've said this um, to bishops in a variety of configurations, um, and we'll be saying this when when we meet in the fall. I don't know when this video actually comes <laughs> out, but. Um, but I've said, um, you, those bishops who have decided as a matter of conscience that they cannot and should not attend the Lambeth Conference, um, they may say that they have my support for doing so, and mm -hmm. they must bear witness by doing that. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't just do it, but you must yes. bear witness. Right, right. Um, and those who decide to attend mm -hmm. must go and bear witness, mm -hmm. because there's no single avenue of approach to help to change the hearts, um, the heart and the spirit um, of, of a whole church, of, of a, a worldwide communion. There's no single way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so th th those that go are gonna have my full support, and those who stay to bear witness are gonna have my full support, and both make your witness from where you are. Mm -hmm. And I think both, I, I'm not just trying to be egalitarian and a nice guy. <laughs> I mean, this isn't, it, 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 I think it's really true. You, you kind of need different voices coming from different angles um, some are going to hear this voice, and some are going to hear another. Um, some outside the church are going to hear one, some inside. You, you need the fullness. You need the Catholic vision of a truly Catholic church where when the sheet falls down like in Acts 10, and there are things on it, and some, some, some say are not good or, or unclean, and some are clean, and the Bible says, what God has made, you will not call unclean. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the children of God, and I think we have to be there to make that win. I'll give an example. I mean, just an example. When I, I was brand new presiding bishop, mm -hmm. I mean, brand new. This was 2015, the end of 2015, early 2016, and it was my first meeting of the um, of, of the primates of the, of the communion. And 
that was soon after we had changed the, the marriage canon mm -hmm. um, um, to, and, and I would argue, and, and others would argue as well, that we didn't change um, the teaching of marriage on <laughs> marriage. Uh, what we did was make it accessible and available um, to, 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 to all um, who would follow Jesus and are willing to take the vows. Whether you are same sex, differently sex, you know, whatever, that's what we did. We didn't change what marriage is. <laughs> now, you can debate that, and that, that's debatable. The, the, the wider communion did not see it that way um, and saw us changing the doctrine of marriage. Um, and again, that's a debatable point. But needless to say, there was a great consternation. And, um, and so I was at that meeting, and um, I could have not been there, mm -hmm. I suppose. But had I not been there, I wouldn't have been able to stand up and say what I said to my fellow primates who were present. And I said, we have done what we have done. Um, and everybody in our church doesn't agree with us. You need to know that. <laughs> and we're trying to be a church that, that makes space for different perspectives. But we have done what we have done in terms of changing the marriage canon, making marriage available to all. We've done that because we really believe that in baptism, well, as St. Paul said in Galatians, all who have been baptized have put on Christ. And there is no more male or female. There is no Jew, no Greek, or um, 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 whatever, whatever. Uh, but all are one in Christ. And we believe that that, that means that LGBTQ folk um, and straight folk and black and white and Anglo and Latino that we are one in Christ. And if we believe that, um, then there means, as the old slaves used to say, there's plenty good room <laughs> in my father's kingdom. And that's what we're about. We just believe that love is really about love and that it's love does not know borders mm -hmm. and love does not know difference. Mm -hmm. And that's what we believe. now. I don't know that anybody's heart was touched or changed by what I, you know, what I've said. I have no idea. But had I not been there, that would not have been said. And I looked around the room, many of whom were my African brothers. It's all guys. Yeah. It was, not anymore. It's changed now. Um, Linda Nichols is now the primate right. of Canada. But then it was all guys. I said, I am a descendant. I'm a child of Africa's diaspora. I am a descendant of those who were sometimes sold and sometimes taken from their mother Africa. I know what it's like to be excluded. And I don't believe that anybody else should be excluded either. My Jesus says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I don't want nobody to exclude me. And so I'm not going to exclude somebody else. That wouldn't have been said mm -hmm. if I hadn't been there. And so some of us will go to Lambeth and we'll bear witness. And some of us will not go and we'll bear witness. And I trust the spirit to use each one. Different pressure points to change the heart. And in time, God's gonna sort it out. No, and I and I trust that you will bear witness yeah. there, and that it will be a prophetic witness. And that means I hope, and I know, uh, I know uh, that you as well don't have any qualms about making folks feel uncomfortable. And, and I think that, you know, we aren't, there's a difference, a fine line between being righteous and self-righteous, right. but, right. uh, I, but we know, we know, uh, unrighteousness, is that a word? Mm -hmm. Uh, when we see it and we know that excluding and taking the lives of others because of who God has created them to be is not righteous. Right. And we right. can't allow people to sit comfortably in that. Right. And uh, right. and I believe that we have to catch up with God. Mm. 
And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm going to hold those of us. You, so the, I'm, I'm, you know I'm gonna, going to push you. Yes, you will. Because I do yeah. know, as you know, what it means to be excluded and from a people right. who have been excluded. And, you know, I would hope that if it wasn't too long ago that someone could have said, we are not going to allow people mm -hmm. who are the spouses of an interracial marriage to come. Mm -hmm. And this isn't much different uh, than that. And so, you know, I want to hold our church accountable, the mm -hmm. American House of Bishops accountable to finding ways to bear witness to the love of God that is justice. Right. Right. And when we do that, then I think that's what the, the Jesus movement mm -hmm. is all about. But I heard you, so it gives me a good place to, to wrap, wrap up. Can I uh, throw one other thing? Oh, like, yes. This, this is going to get you out. I don't want to get you on another. No, no. But, but let me throw something. But I, I'm also aware of something else. Okay. And, and, and um, one of the things that I'm going to give the bishops in September and, and ask them to carry with them is the kind of the, the 10 principles that Dr. King mm -hmm. um, used in Birmingham in 1963. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, the, the one it begins um, before you march. Meditate on the life and teachings of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, remember that we do not seek victory, um, but we seek justice, mm -hmm. love, and ultimately reconciliation. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes on. Treat everyone with mm -hmm. courtesy. And I mean, it's just human, mm -hmm. just decent kind of thing. Um, but I want the bishops to have that in their pockets when, mm -hmm. when they go, because that's the spirit we've got to go. And the reason I say that mm -hmm. is it's easy for us to forget, at least those of us who are from America. Remember, the Episcopal Church is in roughly 17 countries, depending on how you actually count everybody. But those who are from the United States, we Americans sometimes go around the world and we can be the ugly Americans. Mm -hmm. we, we really can. We can dominate, because um, we do, we're the mm -hmm. superpower, and mm -hmm. we do, we can dominate. And there needs to be um, clarity about what we believe and witness to, and yet a genuine openness to listen um, to the stories and the voices of others, too. So it's got to be, I just wanted to throw mm -hmm. that in there, because that, yeah. that really is important, because because it, it we have many more friends around the communion than, than, the, than the voices that make the news. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are people around this Anglican communion that love the Episcopal Church, that really do. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen them. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I've traveled around. That really do. But they don't make the news. They don't make the headlines. They don't get in the church blogosphere. Um, and, and there are very often people who are on the ground really are doing what is good and what is just, and what is kind and what is loving in their context, mm -hmm. but they don't make news and they don't issue statements. <laughs> and, it, and I just want to no, lift yeah, that up. And, to, and, you know, and so we need a part of what we need to do, and I think particularly uh, also, particularly in our context in this country, is to change mm -hmm. the narrative. Uh, yeah. To change the narrative of what it means to be Christian, change the narrative of what it means to be church, and uh, that means nationally, internationally, right. etc. Right? right? And that the narrative of what it means to be Christian, that it is the way it is, particularly mm -hmm. in this context. I mean, we don't have anything that we can go anywhere else uh, and be arrogant about, even at the Lambeth Conference, given the narrative that we have allowed to reign in this country of what it means to be That's Christian. That's exactly, right? exactly. And yeah. so perhaps uh, we need to begin to practice on uh, what it means to uh, be a part of the Jesus movement and to yeah. change the narrative in our own context. Yes. Uh, and it's our fault that people associate what it means to be Christian with a kind of narrative that is exclusive, uh, xenophobic, uh, mm -hmm. racist, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. and bigoted. And so that, yes, I'm with right. you. Yeah. And, but I, uh, and I say that, so that means that we have a responsibility not to be arrogant, but a responsibility mm -hmm. to change the narrative. Yeah. Uh, and as, as I said earlier, to do it in such a way that we, in all humility, catch up yeah. with God. Yeah. Uh, duh. And if I always say, as you have just said, if I'm going to err, then I want to err on the side of being inclusive. 
uh, not exclusive mm -hmm. and just saying wherever and wherever right. I go uh, after yeah. life to be able to say, well, Lord, I just tried to do yeah. what you said you told to, me to do. To do. Yes. Uh, and to not withhold from another that which we would not want withheld from ourselves. Yes. Right. And so I think that we need to take that in these dialogues and these places uh, to which we go. Let, let me thank you for this time. And, and, oh. and, 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 and I just, I want to end with, with this question. This question I know you know about uh, legacy. Because you're a young man. I know you aren't thinking about legacy. Oh, but <laughs> this is why you're the dean of a seminary, yes. Oh, right. such knowledge and wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> You're setting me up for something. Go ahead. So you know what? But you and I have talked about this uh, together. You only have this position as presiding bishop for nine years. Right? Yes. And so, you know, really no one can, they might, but they aren't going to. Uh, do whatever it's the ecclesial thing to do to impeach that they ain't gonna do that, right? I'm sorry, I trust. I hope we're on hope side. Right. Yeah. So you know you're gonna be here for nine years, and nine yeah. years you're gonna be gone, right? Because yeah. that's that's yeah. that's that's, that's you're here the for way a season. You're here yeah. for a season. So you have this small hmm. season. Let's go back to where we were as this first descendant of. African enslaved persons mm. that we know of. <laughs> right, that we know of. Right, you, never, know you of. never know. <laughs> right. Uh, to be presiding bishop of this church that did its share of enslaving your African descendants mm. or your African ancestors. Mm. So, what, as the presiding bishop, of the African diaspora, hmm. when you walk out of this position and what, hmm. after the end of nine years, what do you want people to be able to say about the difference you made as the descendant of those folk who would not have been welcome in this church? No spiritual. I said, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In each of the verses, actually, they kind of ascend mm -hmm. like Jacob's ladder. I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. I want to be loving in my heart. I want to be loving in my heart. I don't want to be like Judas in my heart, in my heart. I don't want to be like Judas. And then it reaches the pinnacle and says, I want, Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. If I leave this church singing that for real <laughs> as the song of its life, then my living will not have been in vain. Then this will be a church that will stand up for those who have nobody to stand up for, that will speak up for those who have nobody to speak for them, that will love when everybody else wants to hate, and that will care when others could care less. <laughs> that would be a church worthy of the name Christian. May it be so. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.